statement and move on. We mustn't lose our nerve, Willie. I fear we may be losing the country. Perhaps a little more consensus in Cabinet. You mean something which no one believes in, but no one objects to? That kind of consensus? Wrong word, perhaps. Uh, pers persuasion, possibly. I find persuasion to be utterly counterproductive. I don't want a Cabinet wasting time talking. We should be doing. We won't be doing anything if we lose the next election. I'm sorry to have to be so frank, but there are concerns that things are going awry. Serious concerns. No, no one doubts your conviction or your courage. Go on, Willie, I'm listening. But what I believe you to be above all else is a politician. That is your greatest strength. You have a political instinct and you must never allow it to desert you. That is the thing that will always protect you. I'm a woman, Willie. I must dominate them or they will destroy me. And you cannot dominate the entire country, Margaret. I will change the soul of this country, Willie. I will do it. Either you are with me or you are against me. We shall prevail. I understand you've been good enough to nominate me for the second ballot. I... Uh, of course. And what about John Major? Has anyone spoken to him? John is still convalescing, Prime Minister. Prime Minister, how are you? Fighting on, John. I see. And your mouth? Improving, thank you, Prime Minister. Good. Now, I shall need you to sign my nomination papers. I believe they're being sent up to you. John. Of course, Prime Minister. If that is what you want. Thank you. Warm salt water, by the way. Prime Minister? Your mouth. You must prevent infection. Yes. Thank you, Prime Minister. Come along, what are we doing? John, have you contacted Tristan and Richard? I'm afraid they don't feel able to help, Prime Minister. I see. Prime Minister, I think the time has come for you to face the Cabinet. Face? Consult, I mean, of course. Is that necessary? When would you suggest, John? I'm due at the Palace in half an hour. Perhaps you'd like me to put the Queen off so that I can face the cabinet. I would suggest we set up a series of private interviews on your return. I wonder, Prime Minister. Charles. Might it not be more advisable to meet in full cabinet? I agree. Absolutely. Get them all in there. Say to them, none of you bastards would be here if it wasn't for me. Now I need something from you. Bloody loyalty. I suspect it might be a little more discreet if we keep it to individual interviews. 
The Prime Minister should have time alone with each of her ministers, and I believe it equally important that her ministers should feel they can speak with the Prime Minister in confidence. Oh, rubbish, John, rubbish. I also believe, constitutionally, the Prime Minister needs the support of the Cabinet in order to continue. I'm sure things will become clearer once you've spoken to them yourself, Prime Minister. Yes. Things usually do. I suggest five minutes each will be sufficient. But what do we say, Ken? I mean, what do we say? Just that I have it, John. God's sake, let's get this over with. You owe it to her to tell her the truth. She's got to go. If she doesn't, the summers here will will. That's what we've got to tell her, I'm afraid. Haven't we? I'm sure you'll avoid unnecessary brutality, Ken. Of course. Right, who's got the batting order? And President Bush, ma'am, was most solicitous. And Barbara. They whisked one away from all the fuss. Quite a formidable woman, I understand. And we were talking to Brian Mulrooney, Canadian Prime Minister. Yes. I know Mr. Mulrooney. Of course, ma'am. He was saying in his country they put up statues to men who lose three elections. Yes. One has a great regard for the Canadians, of course. Of course, ma'am. But you have the support of your cabinet. There are waverers, I believe, ma'am. But one is advised that one's support is fairly solid. I see. I would like to think we have earned that much loyalty. One does have to be on one's guard, though, don't you find? Ma'am? One's advisers. Sometimes, perhaps, advise what they think one would like to hear advised, as it were. Yes, ma'am. Although one likes to think one is still sufficiently in control to recognize the difference. Indeed. And you fight on. One must always fight, ma'am. What else is there? When did you find this out? You knew this earlier, didn't you? It was difficult, Prime Minister. There were non-cabinet members present. I didn't feel I could betray confidences. Do we still have sufficient support? Prime Minister. Do we? Stop fudging, all of you. Where do we stand? We keep fighting. You can do it. Norman's right. You're still our best chance. Our best chance! We must keep Heseltine out. Has it come to that? After everything, I am our best chance of keeping Michael out. John? I believe support is hemorrhaging somewhat on the Not left hemorrhaging. Benches. I wouldn't say hemorrhaging. The party in the country is as strong as ever. But I have only one third of the cabinet. Queen is a remarkable woman. All 
All right, John, let's see what they've got to say. Ken, would you like a drink? No, thank you, Prime Minister. This shouldn't take long. Good, that's more like it. I'm afraid you can't possibly go on. It was clear the moment you didn't come through the first ballot. You must step down now and let Douglas and John run. If you don't, God knows who we'll end up with. I see. Well, don't get me wrong, I'd support you. I'd support you for the next five, ten years if necessary. The point is, no one in the cabinet thinks you have a chance of winning. Like the charge of the Light Brigade. Say Manifique, may say Nepal a guerre. I think I get the message, Ken. It's been too much bloodletting as it is, and no one wants you humiliated, Margaret. Humiliated? No one wants that. You don't deserve that. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate your candor. Sorry, Margaret, but there it is. I think I may need a drink for this. How was she? She'll live. Who's next? Malcolm? It's like a penalty shootout, isn't it? I'm afraid I don't think you'd win, Prime Minister. And your standing may well do untold harm. What's more, if you do stand, I believe you'll lose and you'll undermine the authority of the government. So I'm afraid that you must step down now and let Douglas and John run. And of course, one wouldn't want you to be humiliated in any way, Prime Minister. <laughs> I'm sorry, Prime Minister. Also, awful. Don't tell me, John. You will support me if I stand. But you don't think that I will win. And do you think I should stand aside and let Douglas and John run for the sake of the party? And above all, you don't want to see me humiliated. They've all got together like frightened little schoolboys behind Matron's back. Charles was right. I should have seen them together. How has it come to this? How? John, who have we got on the campaign team now? I'm afraid we're having problems mustering troops at the moment, Prime Minister. These men would be nothing without me. This party, nothing. They can't do this. The country elected me Prime Minister. I should carry on as Prime Minister. Damn the party! I could do that. I could carry on as Prime Minister and damn them. Why should they destroy me? I, could I do that? Could I? Call an election, you mean? No! I don't need an election. I've been elected. I mean, carry on as Prime Minister of this country and let them get whoever they want to lead their damn party. <clears throat> Perhaps you should get back to number 10, Prime Minister. Have a word with Dennis. Yes, thank you, John. Thank you. Crawfy, dear. Prime Minister, how are you? Fine, dear, fine. 
Nothing a good stiff drink won't sort out. <laughs> 